Hello and welcome back to Maker's Muse. My name is Angus and in today's quick little review video, we're going to look at Hobby King's own brand of plastics. So again, Hobby King has sent me some stuff to look at. They did not tell me to review it. They just said, hey Angus, we're sending you some Hobby King filament. And I looked into this stuff. This plastic is cheap. It's actually $10 or so US a kilo plus shipping from the International Warehouse. And for us Australians, it's about $20 Australian plus shipping. So you're looking about 26 bucks Australian to get a roll, a kilo of PLA plastic. Is it any good? Well, let's find out. Welcome back guys. So as I said, Hobby King sent me this filament just randomly and they didn't tell me to do a review or anything, but I figure at the price point it is, I, I really should investigate it. And this is the box it comes in. So yeah, no frills. This box has no identification on it at all to say it's from Hobby King. It just has a, an SQ, a SKU number and um, what it is inside. So this is a dark yellow PLA, 1.75, one kilo. They also sent an orange and a thermochromatic gray to white, which is there. So yeah, inside, nothing very fat, nothing special. It comes with a shrink wrapped, um, the vacuum packed bag, the desiccant inside. It does have a plastic spool, so at least it doesn't have a cardboard spool like we used to see in very cheap filaments not too long ago. And yeah, nothing too unusual and a nice form factor for most printers. So I decided to test out the Hobby King PLA on two printers, my Wanhao Duplicator i3, which is my Cocoon Create rebrand, and also the M150 from Malian, which Hobby King sent to me to review, and the review of that will be coming up soon. So in terms of models to print, I often just browse for ages trying to find models that suit the color I'm using. But if I'm reviewing filaments, really I just want something that has a decent amount of detail to it so I can see if the filament's any good, see if I'm missing extrusions, that kind of thing. So I went with my classic subdivided Deathclaw head, which I did ages ago in my Fallout 4 video. And for the other color, I went with my new favorite model to print, which is the Rock Slime from Garrett over at Chaos Cortex. He actually modeled slimes from Slime Rancher, which is a fun little game, and made them, which are they're actually really easy to print, really printable, and they are freaking adorable. But let's start with the, let's start with the Deathclaw head. So I printed the Deathclaw head in the orange PLA from Hobby King, and yeah, I mean, this is a nice orange, it's bright, it's not fluoro, but it's not too dark either. And this is off the Malian M150, I just used uh, duplicator i3 presets in Simplify 3D, and it worked really, really quite well. There's maybe a tiny bit of stringing, but I had a temperature at 220 degrees, which may be a little bit too hot for this PLA, but the support material pulled away simply and easily. There's not really any dags or uh, errors. There's no missed extrusion lines. And yeah, uh, as I've said before, filament is filament these days. It's unlikely to get filament that's terrible and this is definitely very decent. I had no issues there at all. And next I went on to this one, which is the thermochromatic or color changing plastic. So you might be asking, what does that actually mean? Well, it means it changes color with temperature, thermochromatic. So it's advertised PLA change color gray to white. And that doesn't really sound that interesting to be honest. I thought, yeah, gray to white, that's not gonna be that, that impressive a change. Well. I was wrong. So this is Garrett's model over at Chaos Cortex. Definitely check him out. I am so happy with how this model prints. It's done completely hollow with three shells using Simplify 3D and three bottom and top layers. And he looks phenomenal. <laughs> it's only 200 micron layer height, so it's certainly not the finest it can do on the Cocoon Create printer. And it is freaking adorable. The model's great, but also the print quality is really, really good. There's no drooping or missed extrusion, there's no missed extrusion lines. There is, it's hard to say what it is. There is a line going across from the top of the mouth through the eye that may be just a slight gradient change or maybe where the mouth was, it just, I don't know, tweaked something. That's the only thing I can really pick up on. The rest looks phenomenal. And the really cool thing about this is, as I said, it's thermochromatic. So I'm gonna demonstrate that thermochromatic ability here with a heater. As you know, as I'm wearing a big warm jacket, it's getting very cold in Sydney. So I was gonna hold him up to the heater. It does do it with your hands, but you'll notice when you do it with your hands, you have quite a good insulation. So that actually your, your, the temperature of your skin is actually not very high. So it does take much, much longer, but with this heater, 
I should be able to get him to change pretty quick. There you go. So you notice the, the spikes are starting to change, going like that color, and I'll just hold him in front of the heater a bit longer. So one thing I did notice with the Hobby King filament, particularly this one, the thermochromatic, is the wind was pretty bad. You notice it sort of looks like it crosses over a little bit there. It doesn't actually tangle, but it is definitely not as consistent as some other brands, particularly Colorfab. Colorfab has the best wind I've ever used. This is nowhere near as nice, but again, you are looking at filament that is a fraction of the cost of something from Colorfab. And I didn't have any issues with extrusion, which means the diameter seems to be pretty accurate. I have heard some people say they've run into issues with the diameter changing. And again, at this price point, you're looking at a lower quality control. So do keep that in mind. Maybe if you're printing with Hobby King filament, uh, then maybe if you have a model that must complete 100%, maybe you use something you know will do it. But just for general printing, I am just blown away with the quality of this stuff. So yeah, I've got this model I've been holding in front of the heater for about a minute. And look at him there. How sick is that? So he's, he's gone sort of white. And I love how the, the spikes slowly gain their color back from the tips down. And he's just so cute. Little, little slime. Awesome. So there you have it. Just a little quick review on the Hobby King filament. Guys, if you've been scared to purchase it, I would say go for it because, I mean, at that price point, at least it works. And in my experiences, works really well. So you can't really lose. And in terms of filament, again, the filament game is a race to the bottom and filament is filament these days. I have very rarely come across filament that literally doesn't work. This stuff seems to be great. It is just PLA that I've tested. I haven't tested the ABS and it may become brittle over time, I'm not sure. I will revisit it in a future time. But for now, the colors are nice, the support pulled away well, and the thermochromatic one is super cool. Although it is worth noting, this one's a little bit more expensive. It's about $28 a kilo, not 20. But that's what you get for an awesome different type of filament. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this quick review video on Making Smooths on Hobby King filament. I'll put the links to get it in the description. Again, they go, they just sent it to me and didn't even tell me they were sending it till they actually had already posted it. And they just wanted to send it to me to try out. They didn't actually say do a review. So this is just my own thoughts. If you want to see future 3D printing videos on Makers Muse tips, tricks, and tutorials, please don't forget to subscribe. It helps me out a huge amount. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later, guys. In the latter half of the 20th century, a man has sent rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit. He has actually walked in space.